Uh, welcome everyone this evening. This is one of our three student recognition ceremonies that we do uh, in the Friol Regional High School District. And I think uh, parents and students, um, you know, sit back and, 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 and see sort of the, the broad spectrum of how our students in our district achieve, uh, whether it's academically, athletically, in a co-curricular manner. Um, our, our, our district is truly second to none and we have such a wide range of talent uh, in the almost 11,000 students that pass through our doors. And, and we've, we've kept these three nights uh, each year because we think it's really important uh, to recognize students who've really taken advantage of the opportunities that are put before them uh, here in the Friol Regional High School District. And, um, you know, uh, for parents, I know that I've been um, certainly sending a lot of communication home about the, the school funding issue in the district and and what that looks like um, and obviously parents who are here this evening you're involved in, in, in your child's education and students have made the most of the opportunities here in this district uh, can't be understated you know um, when, when September comes around there will be drastic changes in the school district you know it's it's a 30 million dollar cut and within a five-year period for us uh, which is dramatic uh, and to give everybody perspective for um, a 10-year period we received 51 million dollars in state aid uh, at the end of this phase down from the state which is with senate bill 2 that will be 18 million dollars um, so it's over 30 million dollar differential um, and the state uh, s2 at least believes uh, that the, the the heart of the bill is uh, is is basically that we're you're being undertaxed which I'm sure you all feel that you're being undertaxed. Um, it's, it's, it's built on a faulty premise. The, the funding formula is deeply, deeply flawed. It's artificially increased what, what we're supposed to uh, have an ability to pay as, as a school system. Uh, and quite frankly, it's, 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 going to, um, it's going to splinter this school district in a way that is, is going to make a lot of the opportunities that you'll see tonight uh, not just difficult to sustain, but fundamentally altered. And I would just uh, impress upon the, 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 the parents uh, and the students in this room to advocate for your school system, for the opportunities that you have here. Um, there's plenty of information on our website uh, about your state legislators, your local officials, who supported S2, who hasn't, and questions that, that you can ask. Um, the state really has, has not looked at the funding formula, have not run the funding formula since 2008. Uh, we're part of a lawsuit to try and get the way in which the formula, the, the, the money is calculated, made public. I think if I came before you as a superintendent of schools and said we have a $200 million budget, but I can't tell you how we spend $180 million of it, um, I wouldn't be in my position for very long. And, and that's what we're trying to get at with, with the state, with, with the lawsuit that we're embroiled in presently. And Mr. Boyce, I don't know if you want to add anything. Well, by way of uh, status report to the board on budget development, you know, December really is one of the checkpoint times in budget development. Uh, the auditor is here tonight for presentation of the financial report after awards. Uh, also, a lot of information is submitted to the state for enrollment busing, that kind of thing. Um, as, as Dr. Sampson said, uh, the, the gist of S2 is that state aid to Friel Regional goes down 30 million and your taxes go up 30 million. That's their take on it. Um, and we'll continue to advocate, but that's gonna happen over a period of years. And just to give the board a sense of the scale, the things that we are currently um, building out is uh, courtesy busing, is going to be one of the areas that we take a close look at. Um, the, the situation there is that anybody who lives within a two, two and a half miles from the high school is not entitled to busing under the law. So that is considered courtesy busing. So, we'll, we're, so if you take a geographic two and a half mile circle around any of our high schools, uh, and remove the transportation for those students. It's about 25% of our population, 3,000 kids. Uh, but you basically have to rebuild out all routes. We'll also be working with police departments for traffic management around the high schools, but 
after school activity courtesy busing, those are certainly going to be um, in consideration during this transition phase from pre-S2 to post-S2. Also, athletics and activities will certainly be impacted. Uh, we're looking at contraction, we're looking at modeling out different participation fees. There's a few different ways to go about that, um, but we'll be reporting out to the board on that as well. And finally, academics. The, the other item just worth noting is that the other area of pressure financially is on infrastructure. So on the heels of back-to-back -back defeated referendum one a year ago, one a month ago, um, we still have between 10 and $20 million, which is a significant amount in the immediate future, three to five years of infrastructure work that needs to be done. So we are looking at the alternatives there, which uh, include a third referendum or building back into um, the annual budgets, which uh, are already severely in pressure, uh, under pressure. So that would deepen um, that cut situation and may also accelerate some of the cuts in the upcoming years. So certainly difficult conversations to have, um, but we will, after the reorganization in January, uh, be looking to provide recommendations for the best decisions that we can make, not the easiest, but the best that we can make. Thank you, Ms. Boyce. And I, and I would ask uh, parents and students to follow along with those conversations, uh, especially parents who have uh, students who are, are moving into the system. Uh, this is an exceptional school system. It's an exceptional community. We live in a great place to, to educate children. Um, and we've asked for some common sense things, extending the timeline, not making, making sure that districts don't fall off a financial cliff immediately before you realize that it's flawed legislation. Um, and so, you know, for scale, we were cut two million last year, we were cut four million this year, we're gonna be cut somewhere around seven million next year, and then seven million, and then seven million. And it's, it's simply not sustainable. Um, and it, there, there's new spend on new programs across the state really shouldn't be happening when there are about 95 districts that are losing significant aid. And the argument that any district was overfunded our aid was held flat for a decade. And so those of you who own a home, if your income or your, your uh, if all of your expenses were, were, uh, were held flat for a decade, I think you would disagree with that a little bit. So we, you know, there was about nine billion in money that wasn't funded to schools over that 10 years. So everyone was, was underfunded for, for lack of a better term. Um, but we're, we're getting at the premise of the funding formula to begin with, which we think is deeply flawed. When you look at our property values, they went up about 9% over a five year period from 2012 to 2017. But the state's determination of what you could pay went up over 50%. And, and the two numbers don't jive. So I'm just asking everyone who's here tonight to educate yourselves about what's happening, to take a look at the funding formula, to, to reach out to your legislators, uh, <coughs> and to follow along closely with, with what's happening in the school district. Mr. Boyce and I met with uh, the Support Our Students group this, this morning in Trenton uh, and outlined a, um, a more comprehensive strategy with those 90 plus districts that are also losing aid about how we're going to approach the impact of S2 moving forward and what that might look like. Um, and you know, the, the, not, I don't want to be redundant with many of the points I made earlier, so I'll defer. And what I would like to do at this point in time is we have our audit presentation this evening. I know John Swisher's here, so John, if you'd like to uh, come up, we'd appreciate that. Good evening, everybody. I am John Swisher. I am a partner with Supply Cluny Company. We just recently concluded the audit of the uh, district for June 30th, uh, 2019. The revol results of our audit are contained in two reports that you should have received. Um, the smaller of the two reports is the Auditor's Management Report. That's a report that's uh, required by the state of New Jersey, and it asks us to report on certain areas of compliance that the state deems to be important your payroll, your purchasing, your capital assets, etc. It's also the report that you can find any comments and recommendations in. As a result of our audit, and I'm happy to report this evening that there are no comments and recommendations, which is good. The second report that you received is the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, the CAPR. 
and that has all the financial schedules in it. It also contains in the front the opinion on the financial savings, which is what you really hire us to do, to render an opinion on the financial savings as to whether they are free of material misstatement. That's an unmodified opinion. I'm also happy to report you have an unmodified opinion. Basically, that means that you guys can give us financial statements that are free of material misstatement. When we test the financial <coughs> statements, after our testing, we're able to conclude and render an opinion. Okay. Important at this point to note that the district is, of all our 35 clients that we do for the Board of Education, is the only one that prepares the entire CAPR themselves. It's a great tribute uh, to the staff of the business office, Sean, and of course Trish over there, preparing this document for us and handing it to us for audit. That's the way it's supposed to happen. And again, 35 clients that we have, you're the only one that gives us the entire CAPR soup to nuts. I've been doing this for 30 years, and you're the only one that I've ever seen do that. So that's really great. Um, also in the CAPR, there's two other opinions in there. One is on internal controls and compliance. If you can imagine the state of New Jersey, we have plenty of compliance. Um, that's a clean opinion. And finally, there's an audit on the, uh, opinion on the single audit, which uh, relates to your federal and state programs. That opinion is also clean. So that's all good news. You've got a uh, management report that has no comments in it. And you've got a CAPR with the three opinions with clean opinions. But I want to take a little time here at the end to talk a little bit about your fund balance at the end of the year. And more importantly, as it goes forward prospectively. At the end of the year 2019, the district is still in solid position. Uh, but as most of you know, you vote on your budget every year. And your budget is comprised on the revenue side of a couple of major items, the taxes and the state aid. It take, makes up 98% of your budget. You also utilize fund balance money that you have on hand to help balance the budget. And obviously, as everybody knows, we're losing a lot of state aid. Over the next seven years, we're going to lose $25 million. So if you're losing revenues, okay, your taxes can only go up 2%. A couple of things are going to happen. Okay, the fund balance that you're using year over year, that's generated by unexpended appropriations. Your budget is going to get tighter over the next few years. It's going to have to, because you've got a revenue problem, so you're going to have to address that on the appropriations side. Okay, So as we, as we move forward, you're going to have to figure out ways to you know, come up with other revenues. And really, there, there's, there's no other options out there. So you're going to see a declining fund balance as a result. Because okay? you're not going to regenerate the fund balance year over year. So the fund balance is going to go down as well. So you have a problem on your appropriation side as you move forward, as you're, as you're already aware. Um, Mr. Boyce has put together some projections, which I've looked at and I think are pretty reliable. I mean, it's not difficult to project for, uh, revenues in a school board. You know what your taxes are going to be going forward year on year. You got about two percent, give or take a little bit. Your state aid, you know what that's going to be or what it looks like right now. The rest of your revenues are pretty static. There's no new revenue streams coming in. Again, I think Sean's done some good work putting some numbers together, and it, it does not look good going forward. 